So when you do it as an individual and they take that source from you, if that's the only source you've got, you're kind of fucked to be, you know, very frank. But I would like to believe if you are good enough for a multinational to want to step and repeat on a mass scale, you're going to be good enough to come up with something else again. Because we can't, we can't run away from stealing. You can't run away from copying. You can't run away from people being motivated by your things. But you can definitely reinvent yourself constantly and look at a different angle on things. From Kona Juden to Beer, you mean I'm saying this was seen. Formerly known as Wazima Donzel, bringing you a show about creative entrepreneurs live from the landmark that not only birth as a street culture but also formalize a street hustle. Pune Jujan De Beer, special edition of Silly Swesigo with Tulu Who, Tulu Baby, Tulu Stark, but Dumiso on the formal agreements. How are you? I'm good, bro, and yourself. It's a highly favorite, man. Bless as, as, it should be, bro, as it should be, as it should be. I think the most interesting thing about you is that you have a job. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of creatives create, but you create even within your job. What would you say a brand strategist is for the kids who are probably in high school and niggas who are trying to search courses to try to understand what it means to actually be a brand strategist? Um, you know, that's a very loaded question, bro. Um, I used to think. Um, It was like a suit or someone who had a degree or was able to communicate with good English. But in this day and age, bro, with someone who can sell a product, there's like brand strategists all over the place. Like someone who's really geared towards promoting or marketing a service and or an actual product Mm. and can get an exchange from a value perspective on it. Then you're already a brand strategist, the guy selling the fucking... Potato. Are we allowed to swear still? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So I always check it. Yeah, um, selling potatoes on the street. You're going to buy his potatoes off the other potatoes because of how he greets you every morning. But that's a marketer. That's a guy who's selling. So that, that, that range in terms of, you know, I'm a marketer, I'm a brand strategist. It's really anyone who knows how to position something and create desire for it. You know, if you know how to solicit someone else into giving you something, that's like a crazy experience, you know. And that's that's really the biggest part for me now. Yeah. How have you positioned yourself, speaking of positioning and selling products? Yeah. How did you position, position yourself myself? into a product that brands can tap into? Because you do MC, you do talk for certain things, you represent certain things, you make music, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um I think for me the the biggest thing is um <clears throat> knowing that people are still people at the end of the day you know I can run into a Loazi I can run into the CEO of Investec I can run into the compiler for music but treating them like people first and not like the position that they're in gives you a sort of competitive advantage because then you're dealing with psychology almost and not dealing with the barriers to entry like oh I'm unknown or I'm this I'm that if I can sit down with you and level with you on a human perspective everyone has that and I think in some way that sort of made me a bit more approachable and a bit more appealing because I don't necessarily think I'm smarter than anyone else I just think that you know I've allowed myself to connect with human beings first and a lot of people have lost that touch as well I mean I see it in music I see it in branding I see it in my job I see it in you know, my agency stuff that I do, it's just like we're losing that connection and that 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 flavor, you know, mm-hmm. that will allow you to, to spark something in someone, you know, the way that Steve Jobs of the world used to do it, etc., etc. I don't think that source is, is, is really there as much anymore. And that's why I think I'm still, you know, after all of the years that I've been in the industry, still holding some weight <laughs> and, and being mentioned in certain rooms, yeah. How do you handle the dips though? Because there's moments where everyone is clapping for you mm-hmm. and then there's that moment where you're not catching as much steam. Mm-hmm. There's moments where you're the young guy and yeah. then there's moments where you're the pops, you're the older guy, mm-hmm. you're the vet, now you're the OG. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yo, that question is so difficult because it takes you emotionally through those experiences. Um, I compartmentalize things very well so my success and or my failure doesn't um, affect where I'm headed. Sometimes it's a bad thing because you don't get to, you know, celebrate some of the wins you've had. Like there's Laurie Awards, I think, that I was a part of and I didn't even try. 
collect, collect, like I don't, I don't care to collect. I'm that good. Um, <laughs> no, and not even because I'm that good, bro, but I don't feel like I'm at the point of success. Like, I can win awards, I can travel, I can get paid for what I do, but if it's not what I think is success yet, then I can't stop. You what do you think success is? Um, for, for me, personally, success is uh, being able to change human behavior. I don't think I'm at that level yet. I think I influence it, but I don't think I change human behavior. Like for me, Kanye is someone who, excuse me, sorry, has changed human behavior. Like the way people walk, the way people dress, the way people talk for a consistent period of time as well. Steve Jobs, I mean, he's one of you know, my, my, my heroes. It's changed the way people interact with music. The way I sell music today is because of what he had foreseen in the past. Mm. You know what I mean? That for me is like leaving your mark. Michael Jackson's of the world, the way they consumed stardom. We base our, our reference point on all of these people who actually changed human behavior as opposed to just influencing it here and there. And influencing it is also important, mind you. But I just think like, if you really about it, about it in this world of selling things to people, whether it be a person, a product, or yourself, if you haven't changed how someone operates on a day-to-day -day basis, then like, they haven't really done it, no matter how rich and successful you are. But that's, again, just my opinion. A good book to read on that, sorry, is uh, Love Marks by Ogilvy. I think it's Ogilvy, yeah. Once you become a love mark, I think, it's like, I don't care what you're selling to me, I just need to have it because you have said that I must have it. Mm, the ultimate cosign. Like, like, what do you, like, what do we mean? What are we on about? Like, that means you've done it. Mm. It, does, it doesn't matter like, what your reference point, what your How do you test is? if you're getting to that point? Because a lot of people now, they've reached a point, let's say, you sell t-shirts. Mm. They always sold out. Mm. You increase the quantity. They always sold out. Yeah. You do a fashion show. It's always sold out. How do you think people can mark where people are like, finally, they're just buying into the idea, even without the presentation? The presentation. Um, once, I think once, um, it's so cool that I heard this quote, I was reading the other day, like an article, and I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but um, Virgil said, I take you faking my stuff as a compliment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because that you means run it like... Back when yeah, <laughs> <You're almost laughs> but you know the premise. Yeah. The premise of that is okay. saying like you're so wanted that people want to copy you. Mm. That for me is the ultimate form of adoration, and that for me is the ultimate form of of flattery. And that means you're at that point for me where you're starting to change human behavior. If you're selling out your t-shirts, but then you get to a point where you know no one's necessarily buying your t-shirts anymore outside of your community mm. it's not a bad thing either mind you but that's where your scope kind of ends but if you're selling the same t-shirt over and over and over again and now there's someone else who's stealing your design or getting influenced by your creativity to make another version of that same thing that's when we're stepping into legacy conversations and i think that's when you can say to yourself okay cool fuck yeah i think um I've, cl I've, cl I've clocked it. But how do you overcome the theft? Because there's a lot of people with brilliant ideas. They upload That's... a big corporation. The bigger budget is moving at it way mm -hmm. better because they have the bigger budget. That's, that's a very interesting point because um, you have to remember that all of these big companies depend on the use of the world that can come up with these ideas. Right. <laughs> they can come up with these ideas. For their engine to run, they were at the same point as you were at once. There was a single yeah. guy, a single girl. In a garage. In a garage. They moved, they got bigger, they diversified, and then they needed little versions of them in order to grow and exponentially increase their net worth and value. So when you do it as an individual and they take that source from you, if that's the only source you've got, you're kind of fucked to be, you know, very frank. But I would like to believe if you are good enough for a multinational to want to step and repeat on a mass scale, you're going to be good enough to come up with something else again. Because we can't, we can't run away from stealing. You can't run away from copying. You can't run away from people being motivated by your things. But you can definitely reinvent yourself constantly and look at a different angle on things. And also, sometimes as much as 
we like to harbor on how a brand stole my business idea or stole my thing. Um, I do think there are instances where if you also carry on pushing what you're doing while they're trying to steal it, because you're the person with the source and you are the person with the actual idea, it'll become so much more successful. Push through the pain. Yeah, you know, you have, in creativity, you have to, so many of my ideas have been stolen by um, so many brands that I've consulted on and they've told me, oh, they've typed the email, sorry, we don't have budget, we can't execute on this thing. And I mean, I've been doing this shit for over like 14 years. And then, smang mang chiki chiki, two weeks later, I'm seeing a billboard. I'm like, wait, man, isn't that my tagline just like with a different synonym at the end? You know what I mean? And those are the pains that you, you know, you have to, if, if you're going into this industry of entertainment and marketing, those are the pains you just have to swallow. There's no, there's no like way where the underdog wins if you don't swallow. How do you communicate with the same person? Like you'll find out that yo, Loisy was your comms person, mm. but there's a Tando in the background who, who's a senior to me, who said, yo, we like that, but scrap it. Yeah. They want it more from because them. it was above mm. their pay grade. How do you still communicate with them on a human level? Well, because are, are you saying as a person who's the victim? Yes. And you need to move on and carry yeah. on and get another brief? Or, <laughs> you, you just do it, bro. Like, I, I can work with anyone. For me, like I can work with my enemy. I'm not. I'm not working with Loise. I'm working with like Corner Jutes and De Beer mm. when I work. Let's say you're the you're the multi yeah. corporate or the national. You've screwed me over a deal. If you come back to me tomorrow, you're like, yo, bro, I got work. I'll do it again. I now know where to cross my T's and dot my eyes. But I can't afford to let my bag go as a creative who is trying to make a difference and change the world be affected by human behavior as well. And that's also knowing humans, right? Because we all have our selfish needs and our selfish gains. So if I'm sitting on brand or client side, I'm always going to look out for how do I make it to the next step? And if Tando is like, yo bro, in order for you to move and to reach your KPIs and for you to get your bonus and for you to be considered for the next brand position that's being built because influencers are now the biggest thing and we need an influencer manager, not a marketing manager anymore. You're going to do what it takes. So I can't look at you as an, indiv- as an individual because that's going to screw my shoulder. So now I'm a stepping stone. Yeah, you, you, you will be the stepping stone. Like you, you are, like, every time we go pitch to these corporates and things, that's another thing. Like You're a stepping stone. You need to understand that, for example, Good. great, great, great campaign, Colin Black Label Cup. Probably one of the most amazing insights in this country ever to say, how do you bring footballers together through rivalry? Number one. Number two, anyone who watches a sports thinks that they're a pundit or they're a commentator or they're a coach or whatever. Yeah. So give them that experience. But everyone who was underneath this idea to bring it to life, that was in that room, that was giving those key insights for chiefs and pirates and people, obviously majority yeah. of the people being black that they were servicing the communication to. So the textures of the content, the copywriters and whatever. Do you think that they got the same recognition that the people who sat as the marketing managers at Carling Black Label or the creative strategists at Ogilvy or whoever it was at the time? No, bro. Those people's careers are set for life. But they had to use everyone else under them who didn't have the acumen and the thinking and like we were saying, the source. So you're you saying know, allow to yourself it. to be a stepping stone? If you know where you're going, yeah. It's important. I mean, I've, I've, I've reached the, the stage where I am through sacrifice and sometimes saying, you know what, someone else needed to get there so that I can get my share of voice in the next room. Because if you don't own the property, if you don't, if you don't like, if you're not the custodian, like you and your business, no one can, you can't be a stepping stone to anyone because you will always interview me or the next person and you'll sure. always be in front of me. But there's some kid that's a junior now that you're gonna use as a gaffer or as a sound guy or as a, I don't know, fucking Market. copywriter, promotional. promotional person who's going to make your next live event blow, but he's not gonna get the recognition but he might find himself in the right rooms to have the right conversations. And we, we always like, What's make the it right bad. conversation? How do you put yourself in the right conversation? Because it's one thing to say, yo, this is Domiso, he's a strategist, he does one, two, three, four, five. But how do I leave a lasting impact? How do I 
get to a point where we have some form of re- relationship and rapport besides the work? Um, it's so it's gonna sound so stupid, but it is the work, bro. Like for me, the biggest the biggest thing, like I said, is treating people like humans. Mm. And I have to work every day to figure out how to make you feel like a human when we're having a conversation. So when I'm delivering a presentation, I'm not just delivering, you know, the X amount of years that I was at Vega or the X amount of years that I have experienced. I'm also trying to manipulate you, in a sense, into believing what I think is the big and best idea. Mm. And that obviously, again, psychologically, even to a certain extent romantically, like romanticizing your ideas and making them, you know, making people fall in love with the thought of what you want to do is just as important as, hi, I'm do, I'm a strategist. So once you figure out what, you know, your key selling point is, you kind of have to drill that in and not just introduce yourself. Whether it's charm for some people, whether it's data for other people, there are people in my industry that are way, way, way smarter than me, but they won't get to where I am because when they're in a room, they like to say that they're smart instead of saying, hey, bro, do you know that X amount of people right now in Bramfontein are young kids who don't have X, Y, Z? And this is us speaking, let's say, I'm in that room mm. for a marketer who is looking to capture the youth audience. And if I'm going to tell you, yeah, no, this is what you should do. Yeah, this is what you should do. As opposed to having, a, again, a human conversation and giving you the lay of the land before I step into the boardroom, you're probably going to be more receptive to be like, Actually, so I, should give a kid you, I, know. I should give you a case study, not a solution. Yeah, hundred percent. That's like context. Context is everything in what you sell and how you do and your framework. When you're telling a story at a bra, you don't say, "Yo, boy, I fucked with Dolly." You say, "Yo, boy, I was at Sumo on Friday and yeah, then you took." Of Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from dogs. But yeah, <laughs> the stories you witness. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, th- those, are, those are case studies. And we do it, again, if you look at human nature, we do those things naturally. But it feels like whenever someone's like, okay, it's now your spun to do it. You're not going to tell people the story because you're trying to show everyone you're right. But the journey is probably as equally as important as what the destination is going to be. Landing the creative idea is nothing if you don't have the right pitch for it, if you don't have the right strategy for it, if you don't have the right framework for it. And we literally, like I said, we do that every day. Like, I mean, we were chatting before, we had like a 20 minute conversation about, you know, love and stuff. And we weren't just talking about how we feel, we were speaking on experiences Mm. that contextualized, you know, the point we were trying to prove. And yeah, that's, that's, that's gold, man. If you can find someone who can tell a story in your life for me, like, that's With all fantastic. that you've done creatively, all that you've done for people, do you feel seen and appreciated? Nah. As a, as a, as a, as <laughs> I <thing>. don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and most of my, my close friends hate this, right? Because I'm such an emotional person. They've always been like, Dude, why do you seek validation? And for me, it's not about validation as much as it's just like about um, <clears throat> appreciation. Like, I don't need you to tell me I'm good. But I would really, really like it if I knew that you like, you understood. How good I was. No, not even how good I am, but you understood what I'm doing for you. You know what I mean? Because in my, in, in my work, um, when we were having the conversation earlier and I was telling you how much people don't really pay me, you know, enough, you know, for a 14 year old creative strategist seasoned, you know what I mean? Um, but I'm still, for friends who want to start businesses or whatever, I'm still saying I would give you the same 100% that I gave when I was at Leo Burnett, that I gave when I was at Promise, that I gave when I was, all these other agencies, you know, that, that I either interacted with, worked on, or worked for. You know, I would give you that at the cost of whatever you can afford. But when they get to that place and they use me to get to that place, you know, there's no appreciation to say, yo, dog, you're fucking hot, shout out. And there's no appreciation to say, ah, dog, now we're five blocks just to say thank you for what you've done. But when Smang Bang from MTN walks into the room, they be like, oh my God, there he is. I can't believe him. I see him in real time. And in my head, I'm like, bro, in real life, I am doing that thing for you. I'm Smang Ma. <laughs> yeah, I'm Smang Ma in the actual real life. So yeah, I've, I've always had a problem um, with that and people thinking that, um, I'm dispensable and some businesses that I've been in, you know, they now realize that I haven't. Even in relationships, there are people who 
thought I was, you know, easy to let go of. That I've, and I'm not talking just like love relationships, I'm yeah. talking about friendships as I'm trying to hide this, sorry. That, you know, they ain't page. Be, yes, man. Be in the cut. And we don't really mess with that animal. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, it's very difficult to, to, to get people to appreciate you in a relationship. And then they let go of that, and then later they're like, oh shit, so actually he was that mm. dude. He was that guy. His insights did matter when we were planning that event or whatever, you know, the, the, the case may be. Or, Fuck, I really. The main questions were actually. You, you know, yeah. everything. He's a rash, and he's like, he's so passionate, like to a point where we can't move forward. But that thing actually helped in building our relationship. He was too passionate. He always fought with me. But in hindsight, he fought with me because actually uh, I was being a dick. You know, you know what I mean? Sure. So all of those things are kind of like frustrating even to a certain point. But also, ironically, they give me the validation to carry on. If I fell into the trap, I wouldn't be here. Do you think it's as easy for someone who sells ideas and strategies to other people to implement it for themselves. No. Because they always say some of us is like No. No bro. I like with my music in particular, like I know I have such good music, but I know I've done myself a disservice in how I sell it and how I package it and how I move it. And that's just because when you're too close to something, like you need the bird's eye view sometimes. And I'm so good at doing it for other people that I don't know how to do it for myself because like how do I market research? myself like as a human how do i say okay do outside of your strengths and weaknesses this is what you need to do in order to pop because i'm so self-critical and i'm so close to it and i'm so like attached to it there's too many excuses you can make yeah, in real time 100 percent. i mean money for example i i'm always like yo my music i don't have money i would be further but with everything else and for everyone else and when they don't have money i feel <laughs> <laughs> And you know, like I said, you can have a candid conversation, you know what I mean? I, I can figure out a way to be like, okay, boy, if you don't have five rand, just step aside this way, go to that two rand fifty, and then we'll come back to the five rand. But for me and my vision and my goal, what I'm saying is, I don't have five rand. I don't have five rand. I don't have five Do you think it's time for you to get someone who can? I would love it, man. I would love it. But I'm unbearable to work with. So anyone who does work with me now, I really appreciate it. But like, I, I really think I'm so right, again, because I'm so good at what I do. Mm. that it's to a fault. Do you think your goodness is above board? Or do you think... What, what, what do you mean when you say above board? Because you say you're so good that you're overly critical of anyone you then work with. Yeah, because I, I hold them up to the same standards I hold myself up to. And that's not easy for anyone. One of my biggest fights that I ever had, and we're going to a gig, um, and I got to the house before we left 45 minutes early. Mm. And when it was time for us to leave, these guys hadn't showered. That turned into the biggest fight. And in hindsight, we do fucking relax. You know what I mean? Just chill. I, don't know. I think time is a sign of respect. I do, I do. But, you know, at the same time, it's kind of like I was being so hard about it because I'm like, yo, you know what my demands are. You know where I'm at. You know this is what you need to do. That I wasn't listening to whatever reason they had. And even if they didn't have a valid reason, because I didn't give them that opportunity because I hold You'll myself up to that. I'll never find out, you know what I mean? And if you don't give people the room to express themselves, you know, you end up becoming a hypocrite. As creatives, we always want to be seen, we always want to be heard. But when we're being serviced, it's always like, do you understand that's way? This is how this thing goes. And it's been a very humbling experience that I've only learned in like, I've probably seen the past three months. But um, the team that I'm working with now for my music, where I'm being like, dude, sometimes just fucking listen. Even if you don't like it, just go with it. See where it goes. Doesn't mean that I lose myself, but giving an opportunity for other people to add value to you doesn't mean that you're any less strict with your morals or your views or your standards. It's just a different, you know, lens. How do you keep creating opportunity for yourself? Because I'm... From everything you've said, I've analyzed, okay, cool, you're in this situation, regardless of that, you're moving to the next one. You've seen the billboard, regardless of that, we'll create another one, we will actually get paid. Mm. How do you keep putting yourself in a position to get opportunity? I'm scared of poverty, bro. <laughs> like, um, I wish there was like some fantastic answer or like I can reinvent myself or whatever, but I'm literally 
I'm scared of waking up one day and not being able to live in the comfort that I live in. And that makes me tap into all of my attributes, you know, from the music side, that's a vehicle, the hosting side, the emceeing side, the strategy side, the copywriting side. And I'm naming all of these things and they're all just, you know, it's all just ideas at the end of the day. A song is an idea with a, a beat or a sonic on it or whatever. Copywriting is an idea just put into words to say, you know, strategies are just ideas that are structured for you to prove a point. And in being able to like flesh out this thing, I've always said, I can never be poor, surely. And that drive is really what, what pushes me. And I think if everyone really taps into <clears throat> what they fear the most, they can bring the best out of any situation. I'm not saying you'll always be successful, because I've failed, I've failed a fuckload. <laughs> and I've lost a lot. But you deal with the failure and the losses. Because sometimes it's like, I thought, it's too much, yeah. Compartmentalizing again. I mean, I was <clears throat> in an events company for eight years that I was there, you know, from the inception of. And to lose that was probably the most painful thing, I think, that's ever happened to me. Yeah, like ever, actually. I don't think I've cried as much as I did when I sat alone. Then that period of separation between, you know, what I, what I lived and what I breathed. But at the same time, you compartmentalize that and you wake up the next morning and you're like, yo, it's either I'm going broke and I'm gonna hold on to the past or I'm gonna make double that amount of money in half the time and prove to Increase myself the heartbreak, still. The, the heartbreak rate. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what we were speaking about earlier, 100%, bro. I, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't find myself in a situation where I was gonna wallow about how I lost business partners, how I lost friendships, how I lost extended friendship circles because that business, that events company was built so much on the friends around us supporting us. And I lost all of them. I just like, but at the same time, I was like, it's gone now. Mm. Those people don't care about me. Anymore. Those people are gonna win. Whether I live, breathe or die, they don't give a fuck about me to be quite frank. Because how it's played out is how it's played out. And clearly, I'm now on this side. And now that I've been put on this side, I can't look at what's going on on the other side. And it's not even in a bad way. Like, I love those people. Even today, like, I, if there's any business opportunity for anyone that I was in that business with, 100% I'd give it to them. Mm. i give it to them. i try to give it to them whenever I can. But I also understand that, bro, that failure or that lack of success or that stumbling stone doesn't determine where you're going and it doesn't determine who you are so you need to put that shit in a box go through it whenever you have time to go through it but focus on what's important when you're part of things that grow when you're part of ideas that manifest how do you feel when you sit back and look at the growth whether you're still with it or you're not with it i'm proud man i'm happy i think um there is so much beauty in not making um, success or the lack of success the be all and end all. Remember I told you initially when we were speaking like my tunnel vision is geared towards changing human behavior. Mm. So when I see something that I'm like, oh, it's on the way, even after I leave it and it becomes more successful or less successful, like I'm like, still man, that was cool. At least it keeps me knowing that I'm headed in the right direction. You know what I mean? Of course, I'm a human being, so I'll be like, man, them niggas never appreciated me enough, or them niggas never, you know, you or this guy you didn't cut me the chip. You could have watched me take the World Cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could have watched me lift the World Cup, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, I scored one of those goals that got you to the World Cup. And no one was qualified again. Enough. Yeah. More often than not, I was. With all of the circumstances and the situations and the things that I've been a part of and some of the things that I've um, left or the people that decided to leave me, I know I was instrumental. I know that shit wouldn't have happened the way it happened. I'm not saying it wouldn't have happened, but it wouldn't have happened the way that it happened mm. had it not been for me. The impact that you have on human behavior is also very dependent on me being there in that situation and in that circumstance and me giving my energy towards that circumstance. And you can't take that away. 
And I also can't get money for that either. So I can't be stuck on it and be like, ah, oh, the niggas are mad that. So if there's no residuals, fuck that shit. Let's go forward. Yeah. I mean, if I'm not, if I'm not at the end of the day, if I'm not like winning, if I'm not making money so that I can make other people rich, like, what are we doing? Like, why, why are we here? Like, what's, what's the point? And money isn't the end goal, but money is a great fucking vehicle for you to change other people's lives. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to just be rich or whatever. Do you think your pivot points made your life? Or do you think those pivot points reinforced your thoughts in life? Ah, uh, definitely made me. I'd be a different person if I didn't have my child. Um, even just by how I was moving and how I was acting. Mm. Like, it was way more reckless when I was younger. And even, like, my academic journey. Like, I did it because at the time, I realized the value, <laughs> the value of it now. But at the time, I was doing it more to appease my parents. Yeah. But I was still just fucking rocking. I, I was my like, degree, my mother's like, degree. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean? Um, up until the point where I got to the actual degree that I wanted to do. Mm. That I, it was so weird how I discovered it. But anyway, like, I was just living. Until my child was born, I was just like, rocking, easy, having fun. My parents had paid for my school fees. So, like, I didn't have any debt from before. Mm. I was just literally trying to climb the corporate ladder of advertising and making music for fun, you know. But that pivot point in my life, just like, I think that's where the whole I don't want to be poor thing came from, which made me like, go for everything. And to want to feed at all times. Yeah, that's like, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing more important to me than knowing that my child is okay. Like, I can't, yeah, I can't, I can't not, like, fuck creativity, fuck music, fuck all of this. If my child, like, doesn't get 10 rand from me on the 25th of every month, I'm not, I'm not adequate to feel you. This is the thing I'm doing on the show now. It's called, what do you think the game owes you this year? <laughs> I need you to be entitled. <laughs> Just a bit. Um, they... Um, I think it was, so for me it's probably going to be like a couple of folds because of the different oh, yeah. disciplines that I'm in from a music perspective um, the game owns me a shout out like I, I genuinely believe that I've been doing this long enough I've been as good if not better than most people here and I just feel like I've been judged because I'm a creative too that happens to also be a musician too and it's always like ah Andrew's not serious he's not really in the industry oh he needs to quit his job oh he needs to do oh fuck you bro like, no one was telling Hove to stop selling rocks while he was building Rockefeller, you know what I mean? Like, just because the story's not as glamorous, and unfortunately I don't come from poverty. In, yeah, because, because the story's not harsh. Sense. Yeah, it's not harsh, that's a great way to put it. Because my story's not harsh, now it's as if the, the, the context that of what I have off. to say is, yeah, it's like, ah, he's already got it anyway, ah, but he already had a backing, ah, he's got money in any case, ah, He's not as hungry because I'm not sleeping on the floor. Fuck that. I'm not sleeping on the floor because I'm working hard. Like, that's what I'm doing, bro. Need my Egyptian <laughs> Yes. Like, what, like what, and I'm not, I'm not rich or whatever. You know what I mean? But like, I work. work yeah, yeah, I work, bro. I, the same way everyone works up every day, I wake up every day. And if it's an off day and it's not a music day, it's going to be an on day for strategy. Yeah, it's going to be an on day. Yeah. <laughs> hey, shout out to the off boys, man. Forever. But yeah, I, I go through it with everyone else. And I built... Even like from, from like where I was with the Off Boys, that foundation laid the roots for a lot of careers and a lot of artists that I hold dear to my heart, but also honestly did a lot of mentoring and guidance for and to, you know. So I would like my return on, on, on that to a certain extent because I'm just like, fucking good, bro. Like, there's no, there's no reason. I'm, I'm quite a complete packet, I, I wouldn't lie. As far as music is concerned, there's no reason for anyone to not. I'm nice and I'm like, Nice with the looks. <laughs> nah, <I mean. laughs> nice with the fucking flow. Like, like, what, like, what do you need? Like, you know what Is I mean? There more. Yeah. And so the industry, you know, doesn't show me a lot of love. They always dab me behind closed doors. I find that very interesting. Oh. That shit is. <laughs> I just stepped into that one. Yeah, I see your. <laughs> yeah. 
I see you. I see you grinding. I see you. I see you. I see you. Email. You could have said don't qualify. Yeah, you know what I mean. I see you grinding. I see you crafting. I dog that new single. I it's fine. Well then, fucking retweet it or repost it. You're gonna post some Drake lyric, but you're not gonna support me. And I'm right here in front of you, and we're about to have a shot together. Like, what the fuck are we on about? Like, let's 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 be you know very real about what we're doing and what we're saying in in this in this this talk. And then from advertising and branding and marketing, um, you know, I just give me more money. More money. <laughs> give me more money, bro. Like, like actually value me. Like, some of your favorite groups are like, they have my stamp of my name on it. And the people that I'm involved with them in whatever capacity it is, whether it be corporate events or private events or personal events, you know, you, you know you could give me more cheese. I think for like a, like I said, a seasoned creative 14 years, Got a degree. That 1,600 Rand an hour, yeah. Just be cool with paying me that. Like, don't, don't like short change. Not that, it's probably more by the way. But um, don't be, <laughs> don't like, don't like short change me because of the proximity of our relationship. Mm. When you don't have enough, I'm always willing to go the extra mile to make sure you so get you there. Have more, also go above. So that you have more and to go above. But when you go above, respect me enough to give me what you would have given the white person at Ogilvy or what you would have paid Thomas Green from McKenzie or whatever, you know, whatever the case is. You know, when you go into BMW, you don't go buy the car at discount. You go buy the car because you have enough money to buy the car and treat my career the same way. I am the dealership. But we my product goals. is a whip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. I, but I'm still, you paid on the exactly interest. three years. You paid on the interest. I'm happy in three years. But don't me to the two hundred. Yeah, years. you know. Good. But there's still interest while you get there. You know, while that loan is, you yeah. know, going down, going down, going down. You know, sometimes you add that extra 10, 15 percent interest. So do that for me when you call me. You know, like treat it the same way. Say I'm gonna book you for this four hundred rand because that's what we always did. But next time I'm gonna do it at six hundred, and then eight hundred, and then, and then one day, you know, can be like I, we square at homies. Ah, enough. Because that's how we're gonna build. I mean, for me to sustain the work, for you to sustain the lights, the cameras, the whatever, we need to either put each other on or give each other money. Because there's no white person who's gonna do it for us. A lot so, of questions off camera. Keeping that, a, <laughs> keeping that a clear. Ask the questions you'll have asked off camera in the comments. Yeah. That's <laughs> all I'm asking. Even if you have to create a fake video <laughs> account. I beg, I beg. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, you know, and, and not in a bad way, but just like that's just how the industry is. That's what I've been accustomed to. That's what I've learned. I haven't received opportunities from my friends. I haven't received opportunities from other white colleagues that could put me in the places and the positions to have these discussions and these discourses. And more often than not, any time you engage with someone on a partnership, they're always still looking out for themselves. So if it's not like black people letting black people down, it's you know white people not giving black people an opportunity. So I'd really like to not be a part of that narrative this year and just be seen as a credible creative who we want to give their worth to. What's your word to the youth? It's very funny because um, in my head I'm still a youth. <laughs> but I know, in reality... <laughs> so, I don't know! <laughs> Even Jacob Zuma <laughs> yeah. I think I think this year was the year that I'm, I'm out of the youth league. So yeah, I'm, I'm not, yeah it's, it's my last year in the youth league uh, for, for, for ANC. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out after this. But, um, yo, my words for the youth. It is going to be extremely difficult. And over the next few years, it is going to become unbearable. But just hold on. No one is going to fight for you. So rather be the person who's going to fight for someone else through how successful you're going to become in the storm. There's going to be a shitty ass period for the country as a whole, probably for the world. But that doesn't mean you need to be a shitty person and you can use your story to become the inspiration for the next person. So I think, yeah, that's, that's really, like that's where my head is at even, like as, as a young, in, not a youth, but as a young individual in South Africa. Like I want to look in the next two years and be like, I made it through and these are the people that I helped. And these are the next 
generation of leaders that that you know will be inspired by my story because mm. we need hope. Yeah, you're under an illusion if you think everything is Coca City. Too stark. My brother, Baba Rakel. Shout out. <laughs>